Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in today. And I'm going to be getting into the scriptures and I'm going to be talking about the spiritual gifts. Now, there's a question that's posed in many denominations and many different organizations is whether or not the spiritual gifts are applicable for us today. Do the gifts really, really exist? I want to talk about that. And I do say yes, 100%, because that's what the Word of God teaches. And I'm going to expand on why I believe this and why the scriptures say this. And so I'm going to be getting into the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And I believe that God has a word for you today. But before I get into the word of God, if you have not yet subscribed to this channel and you've been watching and you're new, I encourage you to uh, hit that subscribe button and uh, be a part of what we're doing. And I'd greatly appreciate it if you could jump on board and smash that subscribe button. But anyway, I'm going to be going into 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and I'm going to read one verse, verse 8. It says, Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there shall be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Then verse 9 says, For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. So this chapter, first of all, if you want to understand the interpretation of Scripture, you've got to understand what the chapter is talking about. First Corinthians chapter 13 is the love chapter. So it's talking about love. Now, here's what is done erroneously by several different denominations. They say the gifts have passed away. When the Word of God was written, the gifts are gone. It's passed away. But first of all, it says Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. So that's not true. But where do they get this? They build an entire doctrine on one verse. And that one verse is here in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8 says, Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there, sh there sh be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. They say, look, there, tongues shall cease. So that means tongues have passed away. They're no longer for today. They're gone because look, it says tongues shall cease. So that's done away with. That is not scripture. That's totally misinterpreting the Bible. What this verse is starting with is this charity, which is God's love, agape love. It says charity never faileth. Charity doesn't fail. Love is perfect. Love is infinite. Love is forever. That's God's love. It's, it's his amazing love for you and for me. It never fails. It says, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. A prophecy could fail. I mean, it says, whether there be tongues, they shall cease. A tongues can cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Knowledge can vanish away, but it's saying charity doesn't fail, but these others do. Now, why? Why is it comparing charity to these three things? Well, first of all, charity never fails, but prophecies, that word fail, that's going to end. Prophecy, we're not going to continue to prophesy when we get to heaven. We're prophesying now, we're on earth because we need the prophecies. We need the gifts so we can hear the word of the Lord while we're here on earth. Because the Bible says in verse 9, we know in part and we prophesy in part. We can only know so much right now. It says prophecies will fail. That means they're going to end at some point. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. When we get to heaven, we're not going to need tongues anymore. We're not going to need to speak in heavenly languages. We're not needing to have the spiritual gifts anymore when we're in heaven because we're going to have all the fullness of the Godhead power and his authority. We're going to be like him, the scriptures say, because we're going to see him as he is. So we're not going to need prophecy when we get to heaven. It says, so it's going to stop. Prophecy is going to end. Tongues are going to end, and it says knowledge is going to vanish away because we're not going to need to learn anymore when we get to heaven because when we get to heaven, we're not going to need prophecy, tongues, and knowledge because we're going to have all, we're going to know everything when we get to heaven because Jesus is going to reveal everything to us when we get there. So we don't need those three things. So it says love we're going to need forever because love never fails. It never stops. But prophecy is going to end, and tongues are going to cease, and knowledge is going to be gone. We don't need that anymore. But love just keeps on going. So it's just comparing that to these three specific things. It's not saying tongue cease. It's gone. And you don't, it's the gifts are gone. This is this one verse is the verse that many denominations will use to say the gifts are gone, which is totally misinterpreting the Bible. First of all, and it says that love never fails. It doesn't fail. But 
Say for a, let me play devil's advocate here. Let's say that, let's say that their argument, they're making this argument and it was true. Tongue cease. Okay, then I guess uh, continue reading. It says knowledge shall vanish away. So if tongue ceases, then there's no more knowledge. So you can't learn anything. You can't understand anything. Your knowledge is gone because tongues was, is going to cease. So when the Bible's complete, you can't learn anything. When the Bible's complete, you can't speak in tongues. When the Bible's complete, you can't prophesy anymore. I guess everything's gone and even knowledge is vanishing away. See, it's misinterpreting the scriptures. The Bible is very clear that it never fails. Charity never fails, but these spiritual gifts can fail will end at some point. And look, look what it says. For we know in part and prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When that which is perfect is come, we're not going to need any more of these gifts. Those gifts are going to be not needed anymore because when we get the perfect thing, and this is what they say, well, when the Bible has been completed, that which is perfect has come, which is the word of God. Yeah, God's word is infallible. But it's not talking about perfect meaning the Bible. It's talking about Jesus. When we see Jesus face to face, then we're not going to need the word anymore. We're not going to need it. It's not the Bible because we still see through a glass darkly. Because look what it says here. In verse 12, it says, For we see through a glass dark, darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I am also known. When I go face to face, I don't go face to face with the Bible. I go face to face with Jesus Christ when I see him. Face to face, I'm going to know everything as I am known. That's what the scriptures say. So what is it saying? We don't need these spiritual gifts once we get to heaven. So the gifts apply for today. The gifts are still here. So to use a verse out of context and say tongue shall cease <laughs> here, that's only talking about charity doesn't fail, but these other things will end at some point. That's all it's saying. This is all about love. It's not about, you know, spiritual gifts and, and, and spiritual gifts being gone or anything like that. But it also says when we go face to face, we don't go face to face with a Bible. We go face to face with Jesus face to face. It says when I be, it says I, I know in part, but then I know even as also I am known. I want to know everything. So God gives us these spiritual gifts now because we need them. Because we're fighting the enemy, the devil. Why would God um, complete the Bible and then get rid of the spiritual gifts? And then why would he instruct us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 on how to use them? It talks about nine spiritual gifts in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And then at the end of the chapter, it says, and now, this is 1 Corinthians 13, 13. It says, now abide the faith, hope, and charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. God's love is the greatest of all. And then it says, Look at the next verse, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1. If the gifts passed away, like they're saying, tongues are ceasing and we don't need the gifts anymore. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. I am the Lord, I change not. Look what it says here. Let's continue reading. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1. It says, follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts. How could I desire something that's passed away? How could I desire something? Oh, the gifts are gone. Why would I desire it then? And then why would it talk about how to use things properly in the church? Why would it say that we get nine spiritual gifts in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12? It says how to use it in the church. And then it talks about how to use it in 1 Corinthians 14. And it talks about um, another scripture over in Romans chapter 12. If you read all the way through the first seven, eight verses, it talks about more spiritual gifts. There's six more spiritual gifts. Literally 15 spiritual gifts are being expressed through the bible and why would it say desire spiritual gifts has been passed away here's the reason the enemy wants to try to convince you you can't speak in tongues you can't prophesy you can't have the word of knowledge you can't have the gift of healing all these gifts he's trying to do this because this is a weapon that's going to knock the devil out he doesn't like it he doesn't like it at all and what did jesus say in the book of mark chapter 16 and he talked about in verse 16 16 17 and 18 he says these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues they shall take uh take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover why there's healing there there's tongues there <laughs> there's casting out devils there it's, god has given us the power 
the power that they had back in the Old Testament, or even, even during the gospel time, and when Jesus was on the earth, casting out devils, is the same power in us. It says the same power that raised up Jesus from the dead is the same power in us. We have power. We have the gifts of the Spirit. It has not passed away. These signs shall follow them that believe, Jesus said in the book of Mark chapter 16. He said in verse 16, 17, and 18, he says, we shall cast out devils. We shall speak with tongues. These things have not ceased. And it says desire, spiritual gifts. We should be desiring. What are the spiritual gifts? I can give you nine of them, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And it talks all about these. In verse 8 of 1 Corinthians 12, it says word of wisdom. Then the word of knowledge, that's two. Faith, that's three. And then the fourth one is the gift of healing. Then the fifth one is the working of miracles. The sixth one is prophecy. The seventh one is discerning of spirits. The eighth one is tongues. And in the ninth one is divers kinds of tongues. And interpretation is the ninth one. These are all gifts. And it says desire them. So they take one verse out of context and uh, context in the love chapter erroneously and then pontificate how they're right. And they don't have any other verses to even support that one anyway. You're supposed to compare scripture with scripture to get the understanding. Read the chapter. It's talking about love. It's not talking about spiritual gifts passing away because spiritual gifts are still here for today. The enemy is afraid. He doesn't want us using these gifts. He doesn't want us speaking in tongues. He does not want us having the gift of healing. He doesn't want us casting them out. So he's trying to teach something to get people to be dead, but we need to be alive. We need to use these gifts because, beloved, we are in a battle today against the enemy, and these gifts will just bless you in so many ways, and you can move mountains with his Holy Spirit. First Peter 4.10 says we've been given one spiritual gift. Tap into those gifts. God wants to give them to you. If this devotion blessed you today, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel, put a comment below, let me know what you're thinking, and may God bless you as you continue to follow him, and have a wonderful weekend. God bless.